Once this is done cooking, I will reveal to you guys uh, the color scheme. I'll bring out all the other parts that I coated and we'll have a look at everything. Hello YouTube and welcome to part 3 of my jet ski update video. As I stated in part 2, this uh, video will have some power coating in it. I have already power coated some of the engine pieces and I will be getting some footage of me doing some powder coating. Before I forget, I'm going to reveal what piece is missing from my jet ski engine. I had mentioned in part 1 that there was a piece missing and that I was going to tell you in part two, well, I completely forgot about it. Uh, Jacob from Jet Ski Brothers, I uh, guessed that it was the seal, and maybe what he was trying to say was actually right, but here is the drive coupler, and here's the end of the crankshaft where the drive coupler goes on. This is the shoulder for the bearing, and this part of the crankshaft is supposed to have a collar on it that a seal rides on, and the coupler is supposed to tighten up against that collar. But because the collar was missing, this was actually threading on too far and squishing the seal. So this is what we will be powder coating today. I've got the cylinder from the jet ski engine, not my helmet, the cone from the pump, a piece from the steering and one of the first things that I built on my lathe when I got it I built a mini foundry in the yard melted down a bunch of aluminum made it into a slug and then turned it down into this fancy threaded container and the only thing the container ever got used for was collecting dust this is my powder coating oven I already have a couple of pieces warming up in there that I forgot about. So we have the engine plate and a couple of steering parts that are... This isn't going to be a how-to powder coating video, but if you're not careful, you might learn something. The equipment that I'm using is the Eastwood Hot Coat Powder System. This is their older version. It's about 12 or 15 years old. I've done a couple of little modifications to the gun and I'm using a pill bottle for my powder. I've already sandblasted this. I'm going to sandblast these two pieces and then this I will be roughing up with scotch break. I won't show a whole bunch of footage of this because it's very boring, but this is how I do most of my cleaning. Before you do sandblasting, it's a good idea to clean your parts off with soap and water. And what that will do is a couple of things. One, it will stop your media from getting very dirty. And two, it will stop just driving contaminants into the surface. Because media blasting is fairly aggressive, depending on what media you use, uh, it actually penetrates the surface a little bit. And if you don't clean the surface off well, if there's oil and grease on the surface, it will actually drive the oil and grease into the surface. As I stated in one of my earlier videos, I do not have an actual sandblasting booth. I have this Rubbermaid container with a piece of glass on the top of it, a vacuum to pull out the dust, a bin full of glass, and a sandblasting gun. Here we have all the parts cooking in the oven. It's currently at 354 Fahrenheit. The temperature probe is in the vent of the oven, so it gives me a very accurate reading of what the actual temperature is. 
One more tip for powder coating that's very helpful is to have yourself an infrared gun. You need to be able to measure the temperature of the parts themselves. And the reason for that is if you have a big chunk of metal like the cylinder, it's going to heat up a lot slower than everything else around it. So the oven is going to be 400 very soon, but the cylinder itself is going to take quite some time. It's probably going to take half an hour to actually reach that temperature. If you're going by the temperature of your oven, you're not going to get proper cure. All I need to do is remove my powder bottle put a cap on it and make sure we don't get any dust or debris in here and then we take a little bit of compressed air I've modified my powder coating gun so it traps a little bit of extra powder in here, so it's a good idea for me to remove that piece. And that's it, the gun's all cleaned up and ready for the next powder. I guess I do need to clean off this piece. Seven and a half inches and twelve and a half. That's perfect. Twelve and a half. The bed plate is still <laughs> very hot, so this is kind of tricky. Come on, there we go. Uh, I'll show you guys a little trick that I learned. Uh, this is the ground clamp that attaches to the workpiece and you're going to want to just clip it onto the workpiece, but especially with small pieces, it's gonna cause them to like move around and stuff. So what you wanna do is find a place where you can tie it off that is close to the piece and then you can connect it to your workpiece like that and the weight of the wire isn't going to pull it around. Push the button and start coating. I put a little bit too much powder in the canister and it's causing it uh, to come out sort of oddly. <laughs> Whoa, there we go. Now we're going to disconnect this part. And instead of moving our clamp, we'll move the part. I'm now going to show you guys one of the neat things about powder coat that you can't do with paint. I see a little speck of dirt here. Instead of having to wait for this to dry or dropping it in solvent or anything. I can now stir it over. What we have here is called the cage Faraday effect. And though I don't understand the science of it, I know that it happens. And instead of fighting with it, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to hook the part from the other side. Whoa, and almost drop it. Now I've reconnected the ground clamp and I can now coat it from the other side. Disconnect this part. Move it to the side. part's going to be fun. Lots of corners, nooks and crannies. I 
I put a little bit too much powder in the canister and it's causing it uh, to come out sort of oddly. <laughs> There we go. There we go. That's some good coverage. I'm fully prepared to do two coats on these things, but if I don't have to, that would be great. Okay, because this piece is suffering from the cage Faraday effect, I definitely will be putting two coats on it. So I'm not going to be real fussy about the first coat. Just going to kind of dust it on there. And try to slide it in smooth. All right, now we're gonna put this piece in. I'm gonna do that by just putting a piece of sheet metal on the top and then setting that in there like that. Now we gotta wait for the temperature to go up and keep checking the temperature of the parts with the infrared gun. The parts are in the oven cooking and while they are, I thought I'd take a second to uh, Tell you guys one of the other benefits of powder coating and that is i'm in here without a respirator i've turned the ventilation off and this is the mess that we have from doing all of that powder coating and the cool thing about that is Okay, so we have the parts up to temperature. So ordinarily now what you would do is set a timer for about 15 minutes. But because I'm putting on a second coat, I'm going to very carefully take those pieces out and bring them over there and set you guys up so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, that's secure now. Turn on the fan. I know you guys can't see a whole lot there, but I don't really have time to move anything around. Okay, it looks like I now have everything thoroughly coated. 
so I can pop it back in the oven. We now have that in there and I'm ready to coat this. I masked off the top and the exhaust ports off camera, so we're ready to shoot it. Making videos of stuff makes the job twice as hard. All right, we're getting some major cage Faraday effect in here where it's not going to coat. So instead of throwing a whole bunch of powder at it and wasting the powder, what I'm going to do is hot coat this one. So this is going to get two coats. This issue that we're seeing around here is the reason why they use dual voltage guns. And mine is an older model that doesn't have that. And so I just have to deal with it in a different way. I find that the color turns out a lot better if I put two coats on anyway. So I'm not really bothered about that. Got 398 on the one part and 40 something on the other. So now we set our timer and wait 15 minutes. Most excellent. Our timer just went. Our parts are ready to come out. And I uploaded all of the clips onto my computer from my GoPro. Let's take these out. Here are the two hold down clamps for the steering. Here is the cone for the jet pump. This is half of the thing that I made on the lathe. This is the other half, which I'm still going to coat. So there's the top of it. And there's the bottom. It was quite rusty before I started, so you can see the rust mark still. Pop it down on here. Get a ground on it. And then go to town. All right, make sure we got a connection. Yep, let's do this. As you can see, it coats a lot better this way. Gets very full coverage. If you're having trouble with pockets that you can't get coverage on, take the part out and uh, throw a second coat on it. With a part that's fairly large like this, uh, it will stay warm for quite a while, so you don't need to rush as much. But you want to make sure that you Get it on fairly quickly. If you put it on too cold, sometimes it will uh, have a bit of a texture to it. So you want to be careful, especially with smaller pieces, you want to be careful to coat them fairly quickly. All right, that's going to look amazing. Can't wait to see this done. Wow. It looks like candy. I want to eat it. 
pop it back in. It didn't cool off too much, so it won't take too long to heat back up. Once this is done cooking, I will reveal to you guys uh, the color scheme. I'll bring out all the other parts that I coated and we'll have a look at everything. Ooh, that is nice. I forgot how nice this really is. I am really excited. I'm excited to show you guys what the color combination looks like together. That is sexy. Still has some water droplets on it from cooling it off in the snow outside. Wow. That is nice. All right, guys, get ready for it. The next shot is going to be the reveal of both of these colors together. I generally don't get excited about stuff like this, but I'm actually quite thrilled with this. Bam! Look at that. I really like that. I've got a few more pieces to show you. Here we've got the exhaust manifold and elbow or downpipe, whatever they call that, intermediate pipe. Got the steering thing, which you guys have already seen. Here is the cone on the end of the pump. Some dust on this, it's been sitting around a little bit. We've got the outlet for the exhaust. We've got the relay box. And we've got the steering thing with the cover. And these are the pieces that I did today. So what do you guys honestly think about this? Do you hate it? Do you like it? Do you love it? Do you care at all? If you're into racing, you should know what these colors are. But uh, I don't think it's an exact match but it's pretty close and this is basically going to be the color scheme of the whole jet ski when I'm done. I don't know what else to say about this. I'm obviously very excited about it. I know that the head is on backwards but it said Kawasaki and I wanted it to show up the right way. So yeah, there we have it. It's like candy. I don't know how well the camera is picking this up but don't you just want to taste it? Like, who wants to lick my engine? Be honest. In the comments, who wants to lick my engine? So like I said, if you're into racing, I won't say what kind of racing, but uh, you should probably know what those colors represent. So the future plan for the jet ski is to have the outside of it painted in that blue color with some orange accents. I'm going to try to do a design scheme that pays homage to the original race team, but uh, try to be kind of 90s Kawasaki-ish at the same time. I'm not very good at design stuff, so I may get somebody to help me with that. Well, let me know what your thoughts are on powder coating. Jet skis, tasting engines, race teams, seal bashing or squishing. Just let me know what you think in the comments section. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.